and fills us with finest wheat. First letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. When I came to you, brothers and sisters, proclaiming the mystery of God, I did not come with sublimity of words or of wisdom, for I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. 
I came to you in weakness and fear and much trembling, and my message and my proclamation were not with persuasive words of wisdom, but with a demonstration of spirit and power, so that your faith might rest not on human wisdom, but on the power of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. There's one thing I get made fun of often, or for many things I do, but this one oftentimes, when I'm preaching, my hands seem like they're out of control. They go everywhere. I cannot talk about the ways of the whole of the cross without turning and pointing to it. I can't look to the ways of the universe without going like this. Last night, I think I banged this a couple of times. The movement of the hands. So tonight, I'll talk about hands. Today we celebrate in our church the beautiful feast of the exaltation of the cross. Do we know how radical that really is to exalt a cross? That's like today if Jesus Christ died, he would die by, if you will, the electrical chair. And we would have pictures of the electrical chair everywhere. We'd be wearing electrical chairs around our, our necks. That's a beautiful electric chair you have there. Look at that. The rubies and the... I mean, really, this was a horrific way of death that even the Romans, the poets, would not even talk about. It was so horrific to even speak about. Romans were not even allowed to crucify other Romans. It was only the outsiders, the worst of the worst, would experience the ways of crucifixion. And here we are now exalting the cross. We're celebrating the feast of the exaltation of the cross. How wonderful, fantastic, and great the cross is. Because through the cross is the glory, here I go, the glory of Jesus Christ. Everything about who we are as Christians comes from the truth and the understanding of what took place on the cross. That our God taking human flesh in his pain, suffering, and death, we recognize it as the glory of God. Because from that pain, suffering, and death, he will rise from the dead and ascend into heaven, send the Holy Spirit to draw us in that spirit to share his divine life so that we may be glorified forever. It's the exaltation of the cross and the glory of Jesus Christ in flesh and now forever in the glories of the kingdom of heaven. It's what we celebrate today. It's our celebration of being a Christian. The exaltation of the cross. That which is a stumbling block to, to the Jews, that which is a scandal on, that which makes us trip up of those who think about the ways of faith in another way, and those who think about the ways as Gentiles do of the nations of different philosophies and ideas. It makes no sense to them. But for those who are being saved, it is everything. What does Paul tell us? Paul says, I come nothing else except to preach Jesus Christ and Him crucified. He tried speaking the different ways, and it would work, but it's slow and going when he spoke to the people of Athens who wanted to speak philosophy. I love philosophy, by the way. But it's not the easiest way to get to the truth and the love of Jesus Christ. What is? The reality of what took place historically. Jesus Christ walked on this earth. Jesus Christ was here. Jesus Christ is God in flesh. You could touch Him. You could listen to Him. You could be with Him. And He died before their eyes. Yet He was seen alive before their eyes. It is through the cross that we come to the realization and the truth of what lies beyond death. And that's why we celebrate with great joy a feast day of the cross. Because on that cross... Jesus Christ is our glorified Lord. We know of the glories of the kingdom of heaven. When we look upon that cross, and if it's the exaltation of the cross, and we keep looking at Jesus Christ upon that cross, I said, tonight we'll be talking about hands. And I'm thinking to myself as I look upon that cross, there's so many different things that come to mind. And again, we're not necessary to see theological things all the time. And I love theology. I love philosophy. 
I love all that. I love science. But sometimes we need to allow ourselves simply to enter into the image that is there and allow it to draw us more deeply into the truth of theology, to draw us more deeply into the truth of the ways of philosophy and revelation and the teachings of the church. So when I think of the hands today, I see Jesus upon the cross like this. What comes to my mind is those little children, our little babies, our children, and as we look at them and we begin to teach them how to talk, and one of the things we love to do with children is what? I love you this much. How much do you love mommy? I love mommy this much. And then we can take that and we can show them Jesus on the cross. And we say, you know how much Jesus loves you? He loves you this much. And they can see his hands spread out on the cross. As they do so, we can look and we can see Jesus Christ telling us, it's not that I love you this much. I love you to the point of death, that I would die for you. That's how much I love you. That is what we are called to understand by looking at Jesus on the cross. His love for us to the point of death. And as we take that love and we recognize the arms outstretched on that cross, may our minds now go to the celebration of the Holy Eucharist again at Mass. You will notice that before we have the consecration, the priest will take his hands and he will take them and go like this. And what he's doing is he's putting his hands over the bread and the wine and he's calling on the Holy Spirit that by the power of the Spirit that the priest alone cannot do, but calling on the Spirit and the power of God to use the words of Jesus Christ in the institution, this is my body, this is my blood, that by those words and the calling down of the Holy Spirit, as we look at this very exact second, the presence of Jesus Christ who died on that cross is now on the altar. That's the truth of Jesus Christ. That is what we experience each and every time we celebrate Mass, each and every time we come to the ways of the Holy Eucharist and adoration. This is not just something that happened 2,000 years ago. We can enter into this power of love, of His love for us who loved us to the point of death. He wants to become present to us at all times on the altar. So as we think about that, we know the ways of God's love. And we think of the priest who places his hands over and calls on the Holy Spirit. May we maybe think in our hearts next time we're celebrating the Mass and we're gathering together with the priest. When it comes to the time of his hands and he places them over the bread and wine in preparation for the real presence of Jesus Christ's love on the cross, glorified now, sacramentally on the altar, Maybe we'll think of this. Our eyes might go up to the cross and we'll see the hands of Jesus Christ out like this. And we'll think of Jesus saying to us, I love you this much to die for you so that you don't have to die in your sins. I love you this much to give my entire self over to you so that you can receive me and give your entire self over to me. And then see the hands of the priest go like this and imagine Jesus saying, I love you this much to remain with you on all the tabernacles of the world and on this altar at this time that my love will be able to be given to you from the Eucharist at this Mass that you will receive within your being that maybe you can love me this much.
We, though many, are one bread, one body, for we all share the one bread and the one cup. You have made us live in peace in your house, O Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Please stand. How kind and gentle are you, O Lord. You showed your goodness to your children by giving them bread from heaven. You filled the hungry with good things, and the rich you sent away empty. Jesus, you longed to eat the Paschal meal with your disciples before you gave your life for us. On the night of your last supper, you washed the feet of your disciples. Jesus, the new Moses, you give a new law and new manna. Release us from all that is dead in our past, and make us eager to receive your word and bread of life. Jesus, good shepherd and guardian of your church, open the way for all people to share and serve at the table. Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Please kneel. us to cherish in our hearts the paschal mystery of your Son, by which you redeemed the world. Watch over the gifts of grace your love has given us, and bring them to fulfillment in the glory of heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. the divine praises. Blessed be God. Blessed be his holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be his most sacred heart. Blessed be his most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the paraclete, Blessed be the great Mother of God, Mary Most Holy. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be God and his angels and in his saints. And may the heart of Jesus in the most blessed sacrament be praised, adored, and loved with grateful affection at every moment in all the tabernacles of the world, even until the end of time.